This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. One of the most common talking points in the Naruto fandom is Itachi, specifically Itachi's chakra sickness. See, this unnamed, undescribed, and undefined illness is known to have nerfed Itachi for the entirety of his lifetime. Combine that with the fact that he only had a regular Monkey Kill Sharingan that he overused and abused, which slowly but surely chipped away at his remaining life, we as a fandom feel as though we never truly got to see the full potential of Itachi and what he could achieve in terms of power. And honestly, this is fair. In the aftermath of Itachi's battle against Sasuke, Obito pretty much lays it bare out for us. That not only in Itachi's fight against Sasuke was he holding back, just hoping to pull out Orochimaru so he could seal him out of his brother, but also that during that fight, Itachi had only been holding on to the shreds of life he had remaining, using medicine to abate his terminal illness and chipping away at the usefulness of that medicine by using his MS more. But because we as a fandom feel as though we haven't seen the entirety of Itachi's strength, we happen to ask the questions like, what would he have been like without the terminal illness, or even, what would he have been like with EMS? And considering the fact that Itachi killed his father, who was a Monkey Kill Sharingan wielder, at least in the anime, him having EMS was never out of the question. And I don't think any of us can deny that if Itachi didn't have this terminal illness and even possibly had EMS, his strength would have been undeniable. Possibly putting him in the realm of conversation with people like Madara, or maybe not. To find out exactly how strong he would be with both EMS and no terminal illness, you're gonna have to wait till the end of the video. So with no further ado, let's get into how strong would Itachi be without his illness and with EMS. And before we get into explaining anything, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. And we can't talk about my strength as a content creator without my other YouTube page, ladies and gentlemen, which is the Weeb Commander, where instead of talking Naruto, I talk any other anime. Been talking a lot of Fire Force recently, having fun with it. I don't know about you guys, but I know I certainly grew up as a little bit of a collector. Anytime I could get my hands on a pack of Pokemon cards, Yu-Gi-Oh cards, I jumped on that opportunity. But honestly, as I've grown older, I've been looking for the rush of opening that first booster pack of the day. That is, until now. You see, Raid Shadow Legends with its 600 different champions and endless amount of artifacts that you can equip to those champions gives you billions of different ways to raid your way. Because of the almost endless amount of combinations you can have on your team, there is years of content on Raid Shadow Legends. And it's the first game that's made me feel as though I'm opening up that first booster pack of Pokemon cards after school. And I want to show you guys a little bit of that joy as we go to open some shards in Raid right now. Raid was nice enough to hook me up with 20 Ancient Shards, 5 Void Shards, and 5 Sacred Shards. So let's open up these sacred charts and possibly get a legendary hero. Let's go ahead and open our second one here. It's looking like we got a legendary. Oh my goodness, Crip King Grawl. Our second ever shard we open and we get a legendary support. Let's see if we can pull another legendary. Okay, we got another epic. Oh, I love the way this guy looks, Jorojin. This guy's design is incredible. Man, I can't believe some of the characters we got. I mean, look at this legendary I got. He's got over 7,000 health. And while he's absolutely being added to the team, a couple of these heroes I pulled might need to end up as food. What's incredible about Raid though is that every single champion has reviews. You can get ratings for other players on where to use these champions and even on what artifacts you should use with them. The thing is there's no such thing as a bad pull in Raid Shadow Legends. Any hero that you don't want as a part of your team you can sacrifice to power up your stronger heroes. And if all that's not enough reason to get you into Raid, this month is huge. Raid just released a brand new faction, the Sylvan Watchers, with some amazing new champions like the Forest Elves, the Druids, and the Fays. They're all now here in Raid, and I can't wait to summon them all. And if that's not enough for you, Raid's got a full lineup of events and a brand new season of Forge Pass, where you can get your hands on some of the most powerful gear this game has ever seen. Also, if you're an Amazon Prime member, you can get exclusive rewards in-game right now. So what are you waiting for? Use the link in my description or scan the QR code on the screen right now and you'll get $30 worth of bonuses. We're talking a free epic champion, Aina, 200k silver, one energy refill, one XP boost, and one ancient shard. So you can summon awesome champions the second you get in the game. All this treasure will be waiting for you right here. It's about time we start raiding your way. So Itachi, a fan favorite, the older brother of Sasuke, one of the most powerful and intelligent people we've seen in the entirety of Naruto. Because of things like his Susanoo, Sharingan abilities, and battle IQ, some people even scale him all the way up to being able to battle against the likes of Madara Uchiha. However, unfortunately, like Kishimoto does a fair amount of the time, every time he introduces a character that's too strong for the current timeline they're in, 
they get a chakra sickness and that chakra sickness slowly but surely nerfs and then kills them is this because kishimoto knows that they're too powerful for the universe and therefore their existence will make the writing kind of lazy is it because kishimoto has no idea how to kill them off otherwise or is it simply just an unfortunate reoccurring event regardless of the reason of why itachi was nerfed he was undeniably nerfed while we never get the true details on what itachi's chronic illness was in fact we never even truly get a full confirmation that he had said chronic illness it's more just loosely implied by obito who implied he was taking medicine to keep himself alive the true more acceptable widely understood nerf is the fact that itachi over the course of his years in the akatsuki heavily overuses Mongiko Sharingan. See, it's widely known that using an MS makes you go blind. We've seen it in Kakashi, Sasuke, and Itachi, who was almost fully blind at the time of his death. However, there's other detriments that go along with using an MS, and that is that it takes an incredibly heavy toll on your life force or your chakra. We're not exactly sure to the degree that using an MS technique degrades your health, but we know that using MS techniques doesn't feel good. When people like Kakashi or Sasuke before he got EMS or Itachi use their MS techniques, their eyes bleed. And Sasuke himself said that using the Susano feels as though every single cell in your body is being lit aflame. And thus, while the power granted by a monkey kill Sharingan is undeniably one of the strongest power-ups in the entirety of Naruto, it's also one of the most dangerous movesets to you. To really genuinely talk about how strong Itachi could have been, we have to talk about how strong he was. We can't set the ceiling until we understand the floor. And by understanding Itachi's weaknesses in either nullifying or scaling them higher in accordance to his power-up, we can then begin to understand how strong Itachi would have been with these power-ups. So Itachi, from an incredibly young age, was a very impressive ninja. At the age of four, he was brought out to a battlefield of the Third Great Shinobi World War by his father, Fukaku. And while attempting to give water to one of the enemy shinobi who was calling out for water, the enemy shinobi attacked Itachi, to which Itachi's body moved defensively almost preternaturally against this enemy shinobi, cutting him down in the blink of an eye. Even though this enemy shinobi was significantly injured, he was a four-year-old child. Itachi himself seemed surprised after he cut the Iwa shinobi's neck, almost as though his body reacted to the threat of the Siwa shinobi without him even telling it to, which from a very early age speaks to one of Itachi's most powerful assets, his reaction time, something that would only get stronger with the use of his Sharingan a couple years later. But before Itachi even awoke his Sharingan two years after he went onto the battlefield, Naruto was born and Kurama was released. On the night of Kurama's releasal, he was destroying the village. And Itachi's family, specifically Mikoto, his mother, while fleeing Kurama, was about to be crushed by debris. Now, mind you, Mikoto is a Jonin with a three Tomei Sharingan. Combat and skills wise, she's probably comparable to Kuranai or Asuma. And yet, this debris was so large and coming so quickly that it was gonna kill me. Koto. That is until, of course, Itachi reacted to it and destroyed it before it could. At six years old, possibly at that time giving Itachi, even prior to having a Sharingan, a reaction speed faster than somebody with a three Tomei Sharingan. And obviously his reaction speed, power, agility, dexterity, and all of that only got more powerful when he awoke his Sharingan at the age of eight, after watching Obito cut down his Genin squad. And what's truly wild is we've really never seen Itachi with a one Tomei Sharingan. The first time we see Itachi with a Sharingan, it's two Tomei, which means it's a solid possibility that Itachi just skipped straight to two Tomei. Regardless of a Sharingan though, even before Itachi became a Genin, he got the second highest ever existed exam score in the Ninja Academy, the only other person with a higher score than him being Minato. And after becoming a Genin, he took on the Chunin exams by himself and gained the fastest ever time of completion in the Forest of Death, a time which was later beat by Gara, but still at the current time, the fastest ever time through the Forest of Death. And he did it alone. And then in the final phase of the Chunin exams, Itachi found himself up against an opponent who fought while asleep. Think of Zenitsu, essentially. The problem with somebody who's heavily reliant on the use of Genjutsu fighting somebody who's asleep is that his eyes were closed. And this boy, while fighting asleep, was actually an incredibly potent enemy, being able to keep Itachi at bay. And this is arguably the first time that we see Itachi's battle IQ kick into gear. Because Itachi, instead of panicking or even trying something stupid, realized that the boy would wake up occasionally to see how the battle was going and then fall back to sleep to continue fighting. So Itachi decided that whenever the boy would wake up, he would cast him into a terrible Genjutsu that displayed him dying slowly. And Itachi did this every single time the boy woke up, until eventually he broke the psyche of the boy and the boy had to forfeit while screaming. Is it a bit brutal? Absolutely. Did it win the fight? Also absolutely. Itachi's strength was so undeniable in the final round of the tuning exams that the majority of his opponents just 
forfeited. In Itachi Shinden, Itachi's light novels, we get an even further look into Itachi's power as a young kid, as the stories detail Itachi's time in the Ambu. And a lot happens in these years in the Ambu. At one point, Itachi and Kakashi find themselves up against Obito in a fight. Obito is trying to kill the Fire Daimyo, and the threat of both Kakashi and Itachi fighting against Obito actually makes Obito retreat. On top of that, Obito and Shisui, as 12 and maybe 14 year olds, find themselves in combat against an Ambu captain with a Byakugan. His name is Mukai Kohinata, and he's been selling the secrets of the Leaf, and thus Danzo wants him dead. And while saying that Itachi is the one that won this fight is a stretch, it was Shisui who uses MS Genjutsu ability to essentially make Mukai Kohinata cut his own stomach open. Arguably, he wouldn't have been put into that situation without Itachi being there. And mind you, this was an Ambu captain. That is the highest rank you can hold in Konoha, outside of Hokage, obviously. I mean, here is in Danzo actually had to fudge Itachi's age on his birth certificate so that Itachi could become an Ambu captain at the age of 12 years old. And then obviously, just a couple of short years after becoming an Ambu captain, Itachi was able to kill his entire clan. Now, well, at this moment, Itachi did have his Monkey Kill Sharingan because he got his Monkey Kill Sharingan after killing Shisui. He didn't kill Shisui. He basically just finished the job for Donzo. We don't really see him relying too heavily on his Monkey Kill Sharingan on the night of the Uchiha massacre. We never see Susano pop out of anywhere. There's no black flames burning around the Uchiha compound. And while he does cast Sasuke into Tsukiyomi, he kills the majority of the Uchiha fighters relatively quickly and painlessly, moving so much faster and efficiently than them that he doesn't even have to use his MS abilities. The only person that Itachi really took his time with was Yashiro Uchiha, since Yashiro made Fugaku be the leader of the coup and made Shisui spy on Itachi. Tachi. But even against Yashiro, who he wanted to make suffer, he didn't use his MS abilities. And while technically it stated that if Fugaku fought back against Itachi, it would have been a battle of MSs, thus implying if Fugaku wanted to, he probably could have made Itachi have to use his MS. But more than anything, basically solidifies that there was nobody within the Uchiha who made Itachi go 100% all out. Meaning that this 14 year old, without even tapping into the highest amount of his power, was able to kill an entire fighting force of the Uchiha who believed they were strong enough to overthrow Konoha. And while you can say, yes, it was a surprise feat though, mind you, the entirety of the Uchiha clan was within the Uchiha compound. It wasn't like Itachi was popping around from house to house, slitting throats as people slept. The second the battle started in this rather large compound, every single fighting person within the Uchiha clan was mobilized against Itachi and they lost. And then obviously after the Uchiha massacre, Itachi joins the Akatsuki, where at the age of 16, he defeats Orochimaru. And while this is far from the strongest iteration we've seen of Orochimaru, the feat is still impressive nonetheless. Not to mention after the death of Hiruzen, when Itachi wanted to make sure that Donzo knew that Itachi was still out there, and if Donzo tried to lay a hand on Sasuke, he would very much kill him, Itachi returns to the Hidden Leaf. And upon returning to the Hidden Leaf, Itachi comes in combat against Kakashi, Asuma, and Kurenai, all of which he completely smokes without using his Susano or Amaterasu. He does use Tsukiyomi against Kakashi. And it's actually in Itachi's battle against Kurenai that we see one of the most powerful Genjutsu abilities ever used. And it's not Tsukiyomi or Kodo Matsukame, it's called the reversal of heaven and earth. You know the moment when Itachi says that level of Genjutsu doesn't work on me and he flips the Genjutsu back onto Kurenai? That's an ability of his. He has the ability to flip a Genjutsu back on anybody trying to cast it on him, assuming that his Genjutsu prowess is higher than that of the person trying to use Genjutsu on him. And mind you, all of this happened while Itachi was sick. In fact, Kisame went so far as to say that Itachi was overdoing it while they were in the Hidden Leaf, because Kisame was entirely aware of Itachi's limitations. It's not until Jiraiya shows up that Itachi and Kisame decide to pull out of the Hidden Leaf. And while Itachi does say that Jiraiya would give him and Kisame issues, a lot of people speculate that this was just Itachi making an excuse to make sure that Naruto would stay safe in Konoha. And honestly, I could see the argument going either way. On top of this trip to Konoha, we've also seen Itachi while in the Akatsuki, fatally injure Yagura. And mind you, Yagura was a perfect Jinchuriki of the Three Tails Isobu. And outside of the fact of being a perfect Jinchuriki, Yagura was also able to use one of the most broken abilities in the entirety of Naruto, Water Mirror. An ability that allowed Yagura to deflect any kind of ninjutsu or physical attack just like a Yatamir. However, Water Mirror also has the ability that if you're caught in its reflection, it basically makes a clone of you that you have to fight. Yagura, for all intents and purposes, is probably the strongest Mizukage of all time. And the Mizukage lineage is nothing to scoff at. Tie in the fact that Itachi was able to basically 1v1 him because Juzo thought he could block a tail beast bomb with the Executioner Blade. And the fact that at this point, Itachi was heavily into his sickness and also didn't understand that he had Amaterasu yet. Because when he uses Amaterasu against Yagura, he's surprised 
enticed by it, meaning that you can scale Itachi pretty easily to Yagura before he even ascended to his true level of power. On top of this, Itachi's chakra control is probably the best we've seen from a non-medical ninja. You see, within the Naruto universe, if your chakra control is precise enough, you can amp a broken body to incredible feats. This is why Inoki, at almost the age of 100, is still able to battle during the Fourth Great Shinobi World War, and why Itachi, even though he was riddled with his terminal illness and his body being broken down by the overuses of MS, was able to fight at such a high level. Essentially, Itachi would control his body with minute chakra control movements. And because Itachi's chakra control was at such a high level, he was able to do one hand or no hand seal jutsus, which has only really been seen by the likes of Minato, Sasuke, and possibly Kakashi. And maybe here is in and Hashirama, if I'm remembering correctly. On top of that, Itachi was able to amp his strength using his chakra control. That Itachi was able to, with one kunai, block a Samehata swing from Kisame. And while obviously this is an OVA and therefore isn't exactly manga canon, we're not going to put too much stake into this. But Itachi's strength and speed are genuinely no joke and never have been. And that's without us even talking about his true trump card is Susano. See, Itachi has a non-complete Susano, which has two weapons, one of which is the Yadamir, which is able to emulate any of the five elemental chakra releases. The Yadamir is essentially able to reflect any ninjutsu by matching the chakra release of the ninjutsu coming into the shield. Shoot a fireball at it, the Yadamir becomes fire and rejects the fireball. However, the Yadamir does a whole lot more than just rejecting ninjutsu. It's also said to be able to block all physical and spiritual attacks. And while spiritual has never been fully explained, it's largely assumed that spiritual refers to things like Genjutsu, or even spiritual type attacks like the Reaper Death Seal. In essence, the Yadamir, which comes with Itachi Susano, basically gives him defense against any kind of attack, which is insane when you consider the fact that behind said Yadamir is a Susano, which is already considered the best defensive jutsu in the entirety of Naruto. And in Itachi's right hand, he has the Sword of Totsuka, a legendary blade that all you have to do is pierce an enemy with it, and immediately they're sealed away in a different dimension called the Realm of Drunken Dreams. It is an instant win state. Black Setsu, arguably the most intelligent person in Naruto, said that Itachi Susano with the combination of the Yadamir and the Sword of Totsuka was invincible. And it wasn't even a fully formed Susano. See, in order to be a fully formed Susano, Itachi Susano would have had to have legs and wings. However, unfortunately, this wasn't the case for Itachi Susano, unless Itachi's mobility within the Susano was heavily limited in comparison to other Susanos. Tie that into the fact that Itachi couldn't use his Susano for very long because of his chakra sickness that heavily nerfed his chakra pool, and the fact that overuse of his MS abilities is quite literally what was killing him. And you get a really cool toy, but with like a three minute battery life. But now that we've set the precedent for how how strong Itachi was even with his illness and just a regular MS, we can fully begin to understand how strong Itachi would have been without those limiters. The first and most obvious thing to say is that if Itachi had taken his father's MS and gained EMS, the problem of overusing his MS and that degrading away his life force never would have happened. Meaning that every time that Itachi ever used Amaterasu or Tsukiyomi or Susano while he was in the Akatsuki wouldn't have chipped away at his life force. And this is the true tragedy of Itachi because all of his abilities were a double-sided sword. Yes, they were incredibly powerful, but every time he used them, he got weaker. If you also take away his chakra illness, things like his speed, reaction time, dexterity, strength, and stamina would also go substantially up. Meaning that his already arguably fastest in the world reaction time would get even faster. His strength would be naturally boosted, but so would his chakra assisted strength. And with his chakra control, if you gave him more chakra, what he could have achieved is almost endless. I think honestly, the most accurate comparison for what Itachi's chakra pool would have been without chakra illness is Sasuke. There's no reason for us to believe that Itachi, who has the same parents as Sasuke, would have a differing chakra pool without the illness. So honestly, I believe the best comparison for us to talk about when we're talking about a full powered Itachi would be early war arc Sasuke. And by early war arc, I just mean before Sasuke gets the sixth Tomei Rinnegan, because obviously the sixth Tomei Rinnegan is a massive drain on Sasuke's chakra. We see it now in Boruto that basically every single time Sasuke moves his pinky finger, he's out of chakra. So in terms of ability to spam abilities, dual EMS Sasuke feels as though it would be our best comparison. And we saw from Sasuke that repeatedly forming his Susano or using Kagatsuchi and Amaterasu continuously 
wasn't really that much of an issue. Well, obviously, Sasuke always had people like Karin and Jugo and even Kabuto in the end there around him to make sure that he had enough life and chakra inside of him. I'd also like to point out the fact that more likely than not, Itachi probably has more precise chakra control than Sasuke. While Sasuke is able to do one-handed hand seals in order to pull off Jutsu, which has canonically been stated to only be able to be used by those with the most finely tuned chakra control, Itachi having the chakra control to basically manipulate a broken body at a high level of proficiency in Taijutsu speaks to a higher level of chakra control than even just one-handed seals. So if Itachi's chakra control is higher than Sasuke's, he would probably waste less chakra when using things like the Susano, Amaterasu, or Tsukiyomi, which would put Itachi's stamina pool just above dual EMS Sasuke. But what about things like speed and strength and ninjutsu ability? Well, honestly, we've kind of already seen that. See, let's remember that Itachi was brought back using Edo Tensai. And with Edo Tensai, even though Itachi wasn't brought back at full power like Madara, Itachi didn't have to worry about things like his chakra sickness or the fact that he only had regular MS, since an Edo Tensai body heals itself immediately. And an Edo Tensai body has infinitely refilling chakra. So while technically Itachi was only brought back with the chakra pool he had when he died, that chakra pool continually refilled, so running out of chakra was never something that Itachi had to worry about. On top of all, that Itachi's illness was cured by being Edo Tensai since his body was infinitely regenerating. And thus, for things like speed and strength feats, we can look at Edo Tensai Itachi as our most faithful adaptation. And the feats of Edo Tensai Itachi are undeniably very impressive. Itachi was able to go one-on-one -on -one against KCM level 1 Naruto in Taijutsu. And this was without trying to use Amaterasu, Tsukiyomi, or Susano. Just straight up hands. Itachi then did the same exact thing against Killer B using his eight sword style, which puts Itachi's speed and strength significantly higher than heavy Sasuke, since Killer B was able to kill Sasuke twice. Not to mention after breaking himself out of Edo Tensai, Itachi was able to basically solo reanimated Nagato. Yes, obviously Killer B and Naruto were there, but they were also both about to die if not for Itachi. And this wasn't even the weakened version of Nagato we saw get reanimated. Nagato was able to pull Chakra out of Killer B's version to Cloak, making this Nagato not only fully under the control of Kabuto because Kabuto stepped in to make sure that Nagato wouldn't give anybody any more tips, but arguably probably the strongest version we've ever seen of Nagato. And while obviously without the firepower of the Eight Tails and Nine Tails, Itachi probably would have been pulled into the Jibuka Ten that Nagato was creating. The fact that in this moment that the only person who identified that the Jibuka Tensai could be destroyed using the Eight Tails and the Nine Tails firepower speaks to Itachi's insane battle IQ. But also with eyes that infinitely regenerated from the usage of Monkey Kill Sharingan abilities, Itachi was able to spam Amaterasu basically everywhere. And while Amaterasu does technically have a travel time, it does basically just appear on whatever Itachi looks at. And thus Itachi was able to cover Nagato and all of his summoning animals in Amaterasu. And let's not forget about the fact that Itachi was the reason that Kabuto released Edo Tensai. And let's not act like Sasuke helped in this fight at all. And let's also not forget that in this battle, Itachi was purposely trying to not kill Kabuto. See, people assume that Kabuto pushed Itachi and Sasuke to their limits, so much so that Itachi had to blind one of his eyes to use Izanami. But this wasn't the case. If Itachi and Sasuke had killed Kabuto, Edo Tensai never could have been released, and thus they had to fight a target who was trying to kill them without trying to kill him. And mind you, at this time, Kabuto had every single ability of the Sound Village 5, including Kimimaro Shikatsumi Yaku, Sakon and Ukon's ability to completely change their molecular structure, Jirobo's ability to move Earth Earth. He also had Jugo's clan kick a Genkai that continuously allowed him to pull in nature chakra. He had grafted Orochimaru's cells onto his body, giving him a lot of Orochimaru's abilities. And he had studied at Ryushi Cave, making him a pseudo perfect snake sage, which allowed him to funnel chakra into surrounding items to give them life. Dragon Sage Kabuto is top 15 strongest characters in Naruto, and they had to fight him without trying to kill him. Honestly, Dragon Sage Kabuto could be higher than 15, but that feels safe for the moment. So now that we've considered the entirety of Itachi, his feats, how strong would he have been? Since he wasn't brought back at the peak of his powers like Madara, using his Edo Tensai feats is a little bit of a nerf for him. Well, things like his ability to spam Amaterasu and Susano in his Edo Tensai form are representative of what he would be like at his maximum power. More likely than not, his speed, dexterity, and strength would be higher than that of his Edo Tensai form. And since we did see Itachi run the ones in Taijutsu with KCM 1 level Naruto, the assumption that a more powerful version of Itachi would be able to run the ones with a KCM level 2 Naruto is not crazy. And that's just in Taijutsu. So Itachi would roughly have the stamina of dual EMS Sasuke, the speed and strength of KCM2 Naruto, without the addition of Sage Mode. That feels like a bridge too far. And arguably, with a completed Susano, either the first 
or second most powerful Susano on the face of the earth. When you consider the abilities of his two Susano weapons and the fact that with a completed Susano, he would be able to fly, the idea of his power gets genuinely insane because the biggest weakness to Itachi currently is the fact that his Susano is largely sedentary. Well, yes, obviously Itachi can walk with his Susano. His two weapons are focused on close combat. So if hypothetically Itachi could fly to a target with his Sword of Totsuka and his Yata Mirror, being able to deflect all incoming attacks while he flies in and then stab somebody with the Sword of Totsuka, which is a one-shot kill, mind you. There are very, very few people that could defeat that. But the real question is, who are those few people? Well, unfortunately for all of you, the answer is still Madara. At least the strongest iteration of Madara we've seen. Tentails Madara with a Reni Sharingan and the ability to use Limbo clones that can have their own Susanos. Yeah. They're gonna absolutely smoke even the strongest iteration of Itachi. There's just nothing Itachi could, there's just nothing Itachi could even do about that. Honestly, we wouldn't consider Limbo clones with their own Susano. There's basically nothing anybody can do about that. The real question becomes, could this Itachi be alive, Madara? And that, I believe, is the more genuinely interesting question. And honestly, I'm not entirely sure. It's stated that Madara, while alive, was able to fight with his MS abilities activated for 24 hours straight. The only person with a comparable chakra pull to Madara are Naruto and Hashirama. And even if we're boosting Itachi's stamina all the way up to dual EMS Sasuke, that chakra pull is still a puddle in comparison to Madara's. But honestly, when it boils down to it, Madara doesn't have as much killability or peak defense as Itachi. Obviously, Madara has the Goonbai, a fan weapon made by a legendary Uchiha cut from a legendary tree that's able to reject all physical or ninjutsu attacks. It's honestly probably the most broken weapon in the entirety of Naruto, except for the Sword of Ninobuka. I mean, it was quite literally able to blow KCM to Naruto backwards. But this is a weapon that Madara uses in base, not in his Susana. Madara Susano just has a katana, and while this katana can cut mountains in half, it is just a regular old katana. So in terms of offensive and defensive capabilities, when we're talking about the highest level of forms between an alive Madara and a peak power Itachi, I'm giving it to Itachi. So in a short fight, Itachi, absolutely. But unfortunately, I think the only person with higher battle IQ than Itachi is Madara. I mean, it's close. They're both incredibly genius, but Madara's life is war. From the moment he was born until the moment he died, he fought and he fought well. So honestly, where I scale a completely healthy and EMS Itachi is a live Madara. Because honestly, I feel like a battle between them is a coin flip. Itachi's best chance against an alive Madara is to end this battle as quickly as possible. And I can already hear people saying, well, Nick, if you're comparing Itachi to dual EMS Sasuke, dual EMS Sasuke lost to Madara with no eyes. But mind you, this was sage mode Madara. Madara had Hashirama cells grafted to his chest and he mastered Hashirama sage mode immediately. While yes, he had no eyes and Sasuke still couldn't hit him, Itachi Susano is a lot stronger than Sasuke Susano. Well, until you consider things like Indra's arrow, but Sasuke could only ever use that once. So if I'm considering Itachi as the same as a live Madara, that means I also would consider this iteration of Itachi stronger than Obito. But obviously not Ten Tails Jubito. I'm talking singular MS Obito, which means that this iteration of Itachi would be stronger than the strongest forms of Madara, Obito, Kakashi, and Sasuke. Yes, I did just say that DMS Kakashi would be stronger than a non-sick and EMS Itachi. DMS Kakashi was able to fight on par with Kaguya. And I'm sorry, but a non-sick and EMS Itachi just isn't scaling that far. So while Itachi's potential is significantly greater without sickness and an EMS, without anything like a Rinnegan or Sage of Six Paths Chakra, it's unfortunately impossible to scale him really any further than an alive mod. But what do you guys think? How strong do you think this strongest iteration of Itachi would truly be? Tell me in the comments below. And while you guys are down there, please, for me. Like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. Listen, what do I know? I've only read every single piece of literature ever that's ever pertained to Itachi.